Hi comic book fans and welcome to another suddenlycomics.com video and today I'm going to be talking about uh, the second issue of Sandman uh, by Neil Gaiman cover art by Dave McKean this is really tremendous cover art by Dave McKean um, the middle bit is a painting by Dave McKean and then the outside bit he produced a sort of three-dimensional montage for this and collected the various items around this um, and uh, produce this this cover similar to what he did on uh, issue one actually um, and on this in the painting there we've got three of the characters who are going to appear in this comic uh, the maiden the mother and the crone who have various names which I will go through uh, during the course of this right so you will remember at the end of uh, Sandman number one Morpheus has escaped from about 60 years of captivity he was captured by an occultist group led by a character called Roderick Burgess anyway he finally escapes um, and at the beginning of uh, Sandman number two we find Sandman entering um, his kingdom the dreaming but he is extremely weak and has uh, very little of his power he's trying to get to his castle but he doesn't have the strength to get there so he enters the first house he comes to which happens to be the house of mystery and there he meets uh, two characters um, who uh, who uh, it's uh, the first uh, murderer uh, Cain and the first victim Abel um, now these two characters are this is not their first appearance in DC Comics um, they've uh, appeared in DC Comics for a number of years uh, Kane uh, first appeared in uh, House of Mystery 175 where he took over as the sort of presenter of the stories so there'd be different stories and and Kane would present them um, uh, in the uh, Netflix series, uh, Kane is going to be played by uh, Sanjeev uh, Bashir, um, who is a British uh, comedy actor. He's appeared in a couple of great series, um, Goodness Gracious Me and The Kumars at number 42. Um, I think this is terrific casting. Now, he's been cast alongside um, his brother, Abel. Um, now, Abel in the comics his first appearance and uh, this is really obscure however I have obtained my copy so um, you can go out there and scout for this but his first appearance is in uh, DC special number four and then he takes over at the house of secrets uh, in issue 81 so both these characters have been around in DC for quite a bit in the Netflix series, Abel is being played by, uh, again, a comedy actor, uh, Asi, Asim Chowdhury, um, who is one of the stars of People Do Nothing. Right, so these two take, uh, take Morpheus in. Um, they've got some gargoyles there as well. Uh, an old gargoyle called Gregory and one that's just hatched um, that uh, gets called Goldie right so um sandman explains that he's very weak have they got anything with his spirit in it that uh, he could use to revive himself so um abel says uh yes boss i've got the original contract that you gave us when we first came here and sandman says ah oh, yes that'll do and he says abel uh kane you've got one as well so they both give him their contracts and he absorbs them and takes back some of his power right so he uses this he manages then to get to his castle where he meets uh, one of his uh, most loyal subjects and the person actually who has been looking after the dreaming in his absence and it is his librarian who is called Lucian is this Lucian's first appearance no it isn't <laughs> Lucian first appeared and uh, this is really obscure don't go searching for this because I haven't found one yet um, it's uh, his first appearance is in weird mystery tales number 18 and he then takes over as the host uh, of tales of ghost castle um, 
So, uh, and Lucian in the comic, he's, he's male. In the Netflix series, he's going to be female. I don't think it really matters. It's just going to depend on the acting. Um, and Lucian is being played by an actress called uh, Vivian Achenbong. And um, looking at her, she, and I have seen her in a couple of things, um, I think she'll make a really good Lucian. Right, so uh, having Lucian having explained how everything's been falling apart and the dreaming is uh, out of control and a lot of the uh, regulars of the dreaming have wandered off, um, Sandman now focuses his attention. In order to get the dreaming back under control, he is going to need his items of power back. If you remember, that was a bag of sand, um, his, his mask and his ruby. So he doesn't know where they've gone. So he um, summons uh, three characters who uh, Gaiman calls Hectate. Um, and this, uh, these are three uh, women. One is known as, is young and attractive and known as the maiden. One is uh, middle-aged and uh, motherly and she's called the mother. And one is old and a bit decrepit and she is called the crone and they are the three who are depicted here on the front cover of the comic right now these characters have got a lot of history um, in fact you can go back to uh, greek mythology which neil gaiman loves um, and we have the three fates so um, in the three fates, um, the first one is uh, the young one and she is the one who spins the thread of life. And in, in Greek mythology, she is called Clotho. And then we have the middle character, the mother character, um, who determines the length of the thread of somebody's life. So she is often known as uh, Destiny and she is called in Greek mythology Lachesis and then finally we have uh, the third of the fates who cuts the thread uh, she's known as death and also Atropos so those are the first appearance probably <laughs> of these three characters um, they also uh, they also can be linked to the moon so the maiden character can be represented as the waxing moon, the mother character as the full moon, and the uh, crone, the old character, as the waning moon. So um, these three have been around a long time. They also, um, they also, <laughs> they, they, they also appear in DC Comics as three human witches in a comic called The Witching Hour, in which they take it in turns to tell scary stories um, and in so their first appearance in DC Comics is in Witching Hour number one and their names in this are the young one is called Cynthia the uh, mother one is called Mildred and the crone is called Mordred so um, there you go now these the, the, we get three 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 characters like this right throughout literature so the famous one is probably in Macbeth where we have the three witches who meet Macbeth when shall we three meet again uh, scene um, also more recently in Terry Pratchett's uh, Discworld novels he has a number of witches most famously in the novel uh, Weird Sisters where the young one is called uh, Magrat uh, the mother one is called Nanny Og and the old one is Granny, Granny Weather, Granny Weather, Weatherwax. I was going to say Weatherspoons, but that's a different thing. Uh, if you haven't read Terry Pratchett's Weird Sisters, go and read it. It's fantastic. Um, so uh, these characters have been around a lot in a lot of different places. Um, anyway, he summons them and they, they, um, the rules are each of them has to answer a question, but only one question. So to the youngest one, he says, where's my bag of sand? And she says, the last time uh, we spotted it, it was with a character, somebody called uh, John Constantine. 
Okay, so that is Hellblazer um, in the comics. Um, so he's got the bag of sand, I suspect. Maybe in the next issue, we're going to see John Constantine. Right, then he asked the second one where his mask is. And she says it has been taken, it belongs to a demon um, who swapped it uh, for a protection device. Ha ha. So um, that's a bit of a problem. It's probably in hell. Um, okay. And the third one is where is my ruby? And she says, well, um, it was with the son of a mother and um, the son was uh, apprehended by the Justice League of America. Go and ask them about it. Right. OK, so we've got the uh, we've got the next three comics lined up for us, I think. Um, so that effectively ends uh, the Sandman issue two. Um, but there is a cut scene in this. Uh, where we see a couple of important characters. Now, you will remember that in issue one, that the uh, mistress of Roderick Burgess ran off with the three items of power. Her name was Ethel Cripps. Um, and as a young person, she's being played in the Netflix movie by uh, Neve Walsh. Um, now... In episode two, we see Ethel Cripps again. She's also known as Ethel D, and she's about 90 when this occurs. Um, and she is visiting Arkham Asylum. In the Netflix, she's in Netflix version, she's being played as an old woman by um, Jolie Richardson, uh, another great piece of casting. Um, so she is going to Arkham to visit her son, who she's been searching for for 10 years. Um, she's finally found him. Um, his name is John D, uh, otherwise known as Dr. Destiny. Um, and he's been in Arkham Asylum, having been captured by the uh, Justice League. Um, and he has gone completely mad. Uh, in the movie, in the Netflix series, he is going to be played by one of my favourite actors, David Thewlis. This is a tremendous bit of casting. Um, one of the most horrific comics uh, coming up, starring uh, starring Doctor Destiny, John D, um, being played by uh, Thewlis. Um, I don't know how they're going to do this because it really is one of the most horrific. Uh, comic stories there is um, so but I think that you'll need to wait uh, for that one until I think we get to Sandman 4 we've got Sandman 3 first which is pretty horrific as well uh, anyway I hope you've enjoyed that that ends Sandman number two so we've met uh, we've met Cain and Abel we've met Lucian we've met the Hectate and um, we have found out where the three items of power are. Enough said. <laughs>